Okay, we're live. Okay. Hello. Cool. Hello. Uh, and mm -hmm. welcome. Let's maybe wait a couple of minutes so that people can join and then we'll start. Yeah, for sure. Good. Can you guys hear us in the chat? That's good. Uh, 54. That's good. It's a scarily high number. This is the point at which my text editor explodes on me and doesn't work. Yes, we can start. Uh, so thank you very much for joining this stream. This is the first ever of the B team. So we'll be doing that every week, uh, same day, same time. So Friday, 5 p.m. Uh, chess time. Um, this week we have Joshua. Uh, we'll be uh, writing some features for the B project and also having a small introduction of one of his own library, Flume. Uh, so I guess he'll bit more about that later. But first, we have a small feature. So maybe I can let Joshua introduce the task. Uh, OK, so the first one we're going to be implementing is uh, we're going to be implementing the stream trait for a uh, for a priority queue that we have as part of B. Um, so that shouldn't be too much work. Um, so it's it's going to be used later on in B um, for communicating between different tasks, different asynchronous tasks. So uh, I've got the docs up here on my screen uh, so I can see what's going on. Um, but uh, if you want to if you want to see what's going on, um, we can look up the docs for the hmm? sorry. Is that Vim? No, it's my own text editor. So this may go badly. And if it does, I've got a backup. I can just enable my normal editor. But I thought I'd try to move to it and see if it'd work. So start implementing the trait. So there's only one required method in this trait. In fact, let's make sure we're importing it. OK, so uh, let's make sure. We have all the dependencies in the right place. Da -da -da, async STT. Okay, cool. So, and actually, it might be in the prelude. Let me just check. Um, yes, so the trait is in the prelude, so we can get rid of that. That works fine, actually. Uh, by the way, we have uh, from the B team in the call, we have uh, Alexander Schmidt, we have Joshua Barreto, of course, and myself. If you have any questions related to B or related to what Joshua is currently doing, uh, feel free to ask in the chat and we'll try to answer as much as possible. Yeah. Hey, guys. Hi, Alex. <laughs> hey. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new struct that's going to be our wait stream struct. So it's going to contain a reference to the queue itself. Um, and it's going to be accessible through a method called, um, oh, damn it. 
that's something I need to fix in my editor. Um, through just wait, wait will do. So. So maybe for for a bit of background, um, the current structure Joshua is working on is a priority queue. Uh, we are currently using this data structure to allow us to prioritizing stuff. Uh, currently, it's being used to uh, request and send transactions to uh, peers in a node, depending on the milestone index. So you would obviously want to send transactions that are from a lower milestone so that uh, your peers are able to solidify as quick as possible. So we are using this uh, structure for this at the moment. Yeah, so the stream uh, the stream trait is kind of analogous to um, to Rust's iterator trait. So we define an item and the stream will keep asynchronously producing items until it's um, until it's exhausted. So uh, it's got one required method and it's also got a required associated type. So this associated type tells the trait what item it's going to be producing when we start to wait upon the items in the queue. So the required uh, method is poll next and it takes a pin version of self. So in Rust, pinning is this concept whereby um, where you make sure a type can't move around in memory, which means it will always hold the same address. And this is required to have things like a self-referential struct where it's referring to itself uh, because otherwise, if it moves around in memory, of course, that address it's pointing to is going to no longer work. So pin pin is sort of like an invariant that's required for a bunch of asynchronous stuff. Uh, I won't go into the details of exactly why, because it's fairly complex and there's some quite good documentation on it elsewhere. But, um, that's why that's there. Okay, so this method is going to return a poll. So the poll um, is an indication of the six, or or rather, it's an indication of the completion of the operation. So it can either be uncompleted, or there can be something that's um, ready to be produced. So in this case, that thing that would be produced is our item. So the implementation of the method, so we've, we've already implemented the future trait for wait future here. Um, it might be easiest to piggyback on that, but I don't think I'm going to do that now. Um, right, so The implementation is mostly going to follow the implementation of the wait future. And you can see my editor isn't particularly brilliant at doing highlighting of numbers. It gets it wrong sometimes. So this method gets 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 called every time. Uh, an asynchronous task is attempting to fetch things from the queue. So we may either have a thing inside the queue, which is this case, the sum case, in which case uh, we've got an item that's ready to be returned. And so we're going to return poll ready. And we've got an item, and so we can return a sum. So the sum here corresponds to the option over here. So, so we've done the case where it can return things, but now of course the case is where it can't return anything. So in our case, when there's nothing to return, it's not the case that there will always be nothing to return. It might be that 
a user of the queue inserts an item at a later date and so the queue becomes available for producing items. So we're actually um, never going to produce a none variant here because the queue is always live as it were. Um, which makes the implementation a little easier for us. So pending, pending is what we're going to be returning here. Um, however, when we do this, we want a way to make sure that when a user inserts a thing into the stream, that our task is going to wake up and be alerted when that event occurs. So to do this, we need to effectively make it invoke a callback. So I don't know whether uh, you're very f familiar with programming idioms, but a callback is a way to, to invoke a custom piece of behavior when an event occurs elsewhere. Um, so the equivalent of a callback in Rust's um, in Rust asynchronous uh, ecosystem is called a waker and it's a little type which can be used to wake up a task asynchronously so that means it'll become available for the scheduler to process at a later date um, so in this case we do that uh, as so and as you can see above in the future implementation here um, so this is going to let the queue be alerted when there's an item that's been inserted. So we're going to first create a waker um, and then insert it into the queue so that it can be used at a later date. So this should now work. Um, as you can see, it's almost an identical implementation to uh, to to the wait future. Um, I don't think we have an... I'm not sure whether we've got a way to test this at the, at the moment. Do we, Thibaut? Yeah, we do. Uh, we have in the um, milestone requester or in the transaction requester. Uh, it's in the protocol. Yeah, but we are not using it at the moment, so maybe you have to actually change yeah. something. Yeah, so I'll be doing that first. I'm just making sure it'll actually compile at the moment um, because, well, let's just say Rust. Rust has a rep has got a reputation for being quite stringent in what it will and won't compile, which is usually a good thing. And we've got an error. So future is not, okay. So we need to implement future for it as well. Okay. In that case, it, in that case, we might be able to just copy this implementation. Um, I'm wondering whether we should combine them into one. Would that make sense to do in this case? Um, No, I don't think I'm going to combine them yet. I may do it at a later date. Uh, the reason for that being that there's there's kind of a semantic difference between waiting upon multiple items from the queue and just a single item. Um, so yeah, that that should work fine now. Let's hope. Okay, good. It seems to like that. So now we can get in. Uh, we can go back to the location that's using it and actually make use of this now. So we can call dot wait dot fuse, and that should compile, I think. So you mentioned that we've got a way to test it. Uh, yeah. So if you go in the, uh, so it should be. It should be in the B protocol source worker requester transaction. Sorry, in uh, B protocol source worker uh, requester 
and then transaction. Worker. Right. Okay. Right. I think I let a comment here there. Right. Okay. So we've got the two locations we're using it. Yes. Right. Okay. I'll change this one as well then. Right. That should be fine. I'm going to remove the comment now. Okay. So make sure that compiles. Seems to work fine. Um, can we run anything to test it yet? I've never actually uh, needed to run the entire B project yet. I've, I've always been working um, on small parts. Yeah, so I think that would be quite annoying to set up now because you would right. have to. Yeah, that's fair. You would have to probably set some peers. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's like it's compiled well, so I guess it's fine. Right. Um, yeah, nice. Yeah, so. Um, can can we maybe uh, summarize what we just did? Yeah, because I think many of the people in the chat don't know sure. what was going so, on. Sure. Um, so, how about I? So, this data structure over here is a priority queue, and it's being used to prioritize certain tasks or certain things that need doing over the lifetime of, of, of a B node. And maybe there's a certain task that needs, needs to be done and we want a task to have a priority over another task. Um, so this structure allows us to control when those things get run and so on. Um, I'm actually going to remove that comment because it's no longer relevant. Um, so, for example, we've got a method here on the task called called insert, and it allows us to to insert a new task or a new object or whatever, a new type into mm -hmm. the queue, um, and it's automatically assumed that this object will have uh, have an ordering that determines its priority. And that is enforced by this trait band here, the ord trait. And that means yeah. that we can then, in another worker that's meant to deal with all of these requests or process them in order, we can use either the pop method to to get um, to get the item of highest priority in the queue. Or we can use the wait method to get a stream of items. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, actually, I think I've done something stupid here. Yeah, that, that should be stream. I should really fix that. Right. Yeah. Actually, does that mean we now don't need this? Um, let's see. Uh, so Thibault, uh, you wanted this feature, right? Oh yeah, I mean, the way we are currently using it is uh, considered bad because you are fusing in the select directly and that's not consider considered best practice. So you would have why, to... Why, why is it bad? Why is fusing in the select bad? Well, maybe you can elaborate on that. Me or Josh? Josh. Yeah. Um, so it depends on the kind of queue, I think, that you're talking about. So some queues, for example, um, fusing them may change their state. And so it means that they can no longer be reused after the fact. Um, I need to add a way to automatically uncomment things. Um, but 
yeah, you may not want to fuse all queues because fuse is a method that consumes the item it's called on. Um, trait bounds are always fun in Rust. <laughs> okay, wait a second. That should be fine. Oh, did I comment out the wrong one? I might have done. Let's remove that for the moment. That's rather bizarre. There is definitely a fuse method on stream. Maybe it needs Yeah, okay, I think it requires um, it requires it to be in scope, so okay. So there's an annoying Annoying, but it sort of makes sense. Um, feature of Rust where you can only use a method on a type if the trait that implements, or rather the trait that defines that method is also in scope. So in this case, I think that was our problem. So in milestone.rs and in transaction.rs. So. By the way, uh, Joshua, there is a question in the chat. Maybe yeah. you are able to answer. Sure. Just last one. Uh, does re reactive programming? Um, could you specify a little bit more about what you mean? I've not come across that term uh, in the context of a language like Rust. So is this sort of akin to actor programming or? From what I'm reading, it's reactive programming is programming with asynchronous data stream. So this is precisely what we are talking about at the moment. Uh, yeah, in that case, yes, it's basically actor programming, I assume then. Um, oh. Yeah, uh, the async ecosystem in Rust is pretty much designed to allow that sort of thing. Okay, one moment, I'm just... Um... While Josh is thinking in the chat, if you have any question for the rest of the team, please feel free.
Okay, right. I think... Oh, I see. Sam was able to write in the chat. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah, I did write something. Um, yeah, also maybe mention that Josh did work on his own um, implementation. Um, it, it's called Flume. You can find it on his GitHub. It's really a fast one. And comparison to the standard STD, on, um, pretty fast. And we think about using it in different parts of the project. So we are supposed to have a little discussion about Flume in this uh, live stream at the end. Perfect. Nice. Um. This is rather bizarre. I'm just going through the docs at the moment. So uh, if you have anything else you'd like to talk about, please do. Um, yeah, uh, what we are going to do as part of this live stream uh, also is something very exciting for us because we are actually going to release our first crate. Uh, so we are going to release the Bternary crate as 0 0.1.0 uh, alpha. Uh, so that's an exciting moment for the B team because that's the very first release we are going to do. So that's a huge step for us, uh, and we are really looking forward to that. Uh, it will also allow us to publish some more crates that are based on this one. Uh, so we have some crates that are going to follow. Uh, I'm thinking about the crypto crate uh, with the usual IOTA primitives regarding uh, crypto. So I'm thinking curl, I'm thinking curl. Uh, and right after that, we'll have the um, B signing crate that will follow with all the signing stuff that is currently being used in uh, the IOTA ecosystem. So this is the first release that will make possible to uh, read some more really soon. So just keep posted and uh, you'll see the release. Don't forget the network. Don't forget the network. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Uh, we have the. We are finishing one small stuff uh, in the B network rate, but it's going to be released quite soon. So, in a matter of days, uh, maybe a week, we'll have uh, we'll have probably uh, like four crates being released uh, under the that we are taking. But maybe, Alex, you want to say more about the network? It's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what, I think, what I think is interesting about the network is that it's not designed for an IOTA node. So it's technically just a crate you could use for your own project, and it's in no way tied to the IOTA ecosystem. So we are using it for the B node, but uh, it's very versatile, and we can use it for any other project, really. Yeah, I mean, there are still things that that can be added and that can make it even more versatile. But for now, um, I think it serves its purpose quite well. So what I'm doing now is I'm just refactoring this stream uh, because there is a trade bound that um, we require to call fuse or or other to use it in a select um, statement um, which is a bit annoying and I haven't realized that um, so this is just sort of um, letting Rust know that it's okay to do the thing we're asking it to do Okay. 
Okay, so what we're doing now is we're changing the implementation a little bit um, because we want this stream to be a fused stream, which means that once it stops producing values, uh, it will never produce any more values ever again, which means we don't need to wait on uh, those values. Um, Okay, more errors, yay. So we don't have to fuse this anymore because it's automatically being fused by the code we wrote. So you know when you think a thing is going to be a five minute job and it expands out into far more than that? <laughs> As usual. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I mean, the same maybe, time. <laughs> maybe someone from the community knows exactly what's, what's wrong right now. But. Uh, perhaps. So, shoot, shoot, shoot. If you know what's wrong, then. Right. So I think we need to implement future for this thing as well, which means. Yeah. Okay. Um... Fused future isn't there. Where is fused future? It did say fused future, didn't it? Right, we might 
might have to Where is it? No time to do more looking at documentation. You know, the thing about Rust is that writing code is a bit of it's a bit of a battle, but once you get it working, um, the code is reliable without fault. Oh, of course. I was actually right the first time. Yeah. Okay. error this time. Item is its output. Right, okay, so yeah, so it just needs a single method. Okay, of course, one hundred. And the compiler errors are becoming easier and easier, so that's probably a good sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see it going through all of the various stages um, that the compiler goes through. Things like it goes through. Hey. passing mm -hmm. and then it goes to initial type checking and then it goes to lifetime checks and then once you're beyond that yeah, you're yeah, usually yeah. okay i think that was a perfect example of what we are doing on a daily basis you, you just battle with the with the rest compiler but at the end it's working and you know it's uh, mm. it can be for so i think that uh, yeah we don't actually need this stream implementation i don't think um, but it might be useful to keep it here because, I mean, it is basically a stream anyway. Um, yeah. um, anyway, I think, I think this is done anyway, so maybe we can switch to the next, next thing. Yep, so is that publishing, right? That would be the release. Yep, okay. So you are up to doing to do it is to publish the release of uh, B ternary. So. Yeah. So we just we have a question in the chat, so I'm going to read it. Uh, why do you guys put your stuff to Alex BP repo and not the official one? Uh, this is a good question. So regarding our roadmap, the first quarter of 2020 was dedicated to writing a prototype uh, for B, and the second quarter is dedicated to moving out of this prototype to the main repository. So. We just wanted to, uh, because we have a very strict uh, uh, process for the B repository, so we are doing an RFC process, which means that everything that enters the main repository should be justified by an RFC. Um, 
which means that it should be properly designed uh, and it should also pass a very strict CI. Uh, so this repository, this alternate repository, it allows us to uh, operate very quickly. So it allowed us to have a prototype for me really, really quickly. And then now, since we are in a satisfying state, we are moving some parts of me from this repository to uh, the official one. So that's the reason. Uh, and actually today we are doing the first step of that uh, is that we are moving one of our crates from BP uh, to B, which is the B ternary one. And that's exactly what Joshua is going to do now. Yeah, I'm just going to close this for the moment. Um, so we're going to go through the normal process of publishing a crate now. So just got to make sure, wrong, wrong file, actually I can open it right here. Um, what is that that t that's my editor so it's sort of oh. a, an attempt at making something i like but it's got a few issues yet but it it's looks good. not in a usable state um so the normal process is to make sure that we've got all of the fields like 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 the author and description and all of that uh, working correctly. Did we want to um, add any category slugs? Let me see. <laughs> Tangled broccoli. <laughs> I went through the categories, but I didn't find anything that would be remotely interesting for us. Mm. Um, I feel like they are a bit limited, the categories on Create.io. Yeah, I think, um, they're, I think they're more dedicated to user-facing type things, aren't they? Um, hmm. Anyway, I think... Okay, there's a few other fields that we might want, like home page. Where do we want that pointing to? Uh, we may want to put iota.org. Okay. Okay, I think that should be all fine. We don't have any. Um, uh, uh, but do you need things? to? Do you need to push that to the repository? Do I need to approve it? Yes, I'll be doing that in a moment. I just wanted to make sure there's nothing else that we need to care about before, before doing right. that. Um, okay, and there's nothing we need to exclude from the crate, is there? Okay, I'm going to do a dry run first. Maybe you can explain what's a dry run. Okay, so a dry run is a feature of Cargo that lets us uh, try to publish without um, without actually doing the final publish yet. It, it, it sort of shows you all of the warnings that you'd normally get and so on. Yeah, so just to be sure, you just run the, uh, the dry run into your QFuse uh, bench, right? Because I still see Bitternary 0 0.1.0 and not alpha. Uh, do you? Where's, where's that? Uh, ju just before uploading Bitternary version oh, 0. Sorry, 0. I, I... Maybe yeah, it's not rebased I'm in or. the wrong repository. That was so clever of me. Right. Now we're in the right place. It's annoying working with two different repositories. Um, okay, right. Yeah. Um, uh, you probably can do that. Hmm, sorry? Oh, that's your own repository, right? So you need to do a PR? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be doing that right. first. 
Okay, I think everything else is fine then. In that case, I'll open the PR. I love um, it. Uh, Alex, Sam, uh, will you be reactive enough to approve yep. it? Yep, sure. Yeah, this uh, looks good to me, yeah. But you'll need to approve it on GitHub. Right, here we go. I'm just gonna get rid of all of the things in the pull request message since it's only a one line change. since I already saw it. <laughs> okay. We've got nothing in the readme, but um, that's probably not going to be a problem since we're pointing at the main repository anyway. Anyway, that's the alpha, and I think we have a lot to change, so the readme would have been uh, modified a lot, so I... Yeah. Uh, all right, let me approve that. Okay, it's approved. And it's approved by me as well. Oh god, the CI is here. run, isn't it? And oh, we have... here we go. Yeah, let's maybe wait for the CI. Mm -hmm. oh, perfect. Running continuous Dude. integration for a one line change on a file that's not even code. You know what? I'll just squash it. <laughs> Which is quite interesting because maybe it means that we have to change the CI to not trigger if it's not code related. That's definitely something we can do. Mm, yeah. I um, we'll have to think about the best and way of doing that, of course, but um, still, it all we have a So, right, it's merged. In that case, uh, the person in the chat. <laughs> um, what's that person in the chat? Oh. <laughs> um, here we go then. I guess it's time to publish. Uh, are we all okay with everything? Yep. Here we go. final compilation just to check it works. There we go, that's it. It's, it's now done. Oh, maybe you can show us the result on Trace.io? Yeah, let me just, um, just open browser one second. Um, ah, I can see it already under the new crates. Oh. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Where are we? That Here was we easy. Yeah. Hmm. Awesome. Nice. Cargo does make it extremely easy to do all of this stuff. Maybe um, the documentation cool. we'll be building at the moment as well. So, so we should be able to yeah. see that in a moment. Maybe within a minute or two. Oh, it, uh, it has to run and then when it's done, it appears? Yeah, so it usually takes no more than five minutes maximum. If you just join the stream, that's a very important moment for us because that's the first thing we ever released as a team. So, yeah, that's a, that's a huge step for us. And in the coming days or weeks, we are going to release more stuff toward our release at least a peanut. Uh, most important thing. Yeah, that's important. It's not there yet, but um, we'll be soon. Homepage link works, which is 
always nice to know that I didn't type it incorrectly. While the documentation is being built, maybe we still have a bit of time, so maybe we can start the discussion about Flume. Uh, maybe you can explain what Flume is and why we are considering using it in B instead of uh, what currently exists in the REST ecosystem. Sure. So um, there's a fairly useful construct when you're doing asynchronous programming, which is a uh, which is the concept of a channel, which is a data structure that you can throw data in on one end and it'll be received on the other end. And um, they're generally designed to be thread safe so that you can communicate between threads, but you can do so without having a central index that gets locked or whatever. And this means that it's possible to um, to communicate between threads in a faster way so rather than needing to do like a direct handshake between two threads with a mutex, you can th throw data at a thread and have it process it as and when it gets to it. Um, and I was interested in looking into how these work. And um, I found that I could actually make one fairly easily um, and it wasn't very good or fast at first and I just thought uh, oh maybe I'll keep trying to push this and see how fast I can get it to go and I kept pushing and pushing and um, it turns out that the current version is fairly quick um, so hopefully I think the stream is still in the web browser, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I see the browser, but yeah. Let's remove that one. Um, I'll add the other one, the one I'm currently on. You see the terminal now? There. So, Flume is designed to be fast but also safe so one of the things that um, I wanted to do was there are two main competing channel implementations in the Rust ecosystem there's the one in the standard library which which works and it's generally fairly reliable but it doesn't have all that many features and it's not very fast at all so um, you can see in benchmarks, um, let me go to the newest version, you can see in benchmarks that the standard library version uh, here denoted by here denoted by MPSC is quite slow compared to others. This is time required to, ex uh, to execute a test. It's fairly slow on most things and I wanted to make one that was uh, a bunch faster and so the alternative is a crate called crossbeam now crossbeam has been in development for quite a few years now um, but it's quite large uh, it's got quite a few dependencies and it makes a lot of uh, and, uh, and also it makes use of a lot of unsafe code which um, for me is not something I'm too happy with. I'd, I'd rather have, have an implementation that keeps unsafe code to a minimum so that I can sort of confirm that it's, uh, that it's not going to explode or produce undefined behavior or so on. So um, that's what I did. I ended up writing a version and it ended up being fairly quick. So I can run a few benchmarks for you that might be a vaguely interesting thing. Um, I'm actually going to change which benchmarks get run because otherwise it'll take bloody ages, I'll be honest. Um, so, which benchmark's the most interesting? 
these these ones are fairly interesting. Um, what happens when you end up writing something that is more efficient than the standard library? Is there a way for you to uh, publish that in the standard library somehow? Yeah, so I've I've been talking with the with the Rust developers about getting it integrated, and they seem extremely open to the idea. And so, over the last month or so, uh, when I've had time and when I've not been doing other things. I've been slowly working on it and getting it into a place where it's ready to be basically tested to destruction in order to make sure that um, it's going to work as an adequate replacement. Um, so that's been the process. I need to dedicate a bit more time to it really, mm -hmm. but hopefully in time it can become the new standard. Um, so I can, that would be open. can run the benchmark. Yeah. Oh goodness, it's going to recompile. Hopefully, it shouldn't take too long. Um, I decided to in invest in a Ryzen processor purely for the fact that I'm a Rust developer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while this is compiling, we are coming to the end of the stream anyway, so maybe we can take some questions in the chat if you guys have some. Uh, so please feel free. Yeah. Uh, so obviously this session was the first of its kind. Uh, this is all new for us, so we are very much open to suggestions and feedback, uh, both in the YouTube channel or on Discord. So we are going to do that every week. Uh, so we are definitely going to improve what we are providing. So uh, yeah, feel free to help us improve. Yeah, and uh, thanks for watching. Yes. For watching. Yeah. So just before we go, I think the docs may have built now. Uh, yep, they've built now, so I'll just I'll just sort of show show them off, I guess. I'm gonna guess the stream isn't starting up again as it was before, is it? Wait. Are we still live? I don't know. Uh, OBS so. Studio decided oh, no. to die. Are we live again? Oh, we are not. I'm going to just do something on screen yeah. so I can check the stream. I think it died. OK. But people say but, yes in the chat. No, no, so. no, no Is it dead? Oh, people no, say it's, it's back. It's back, OK. Cool. It's back, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, we are back. Sorry about that. Yeah, so what, what just happened is that um, Joshua uh, ran a very uh, expensive compilation and his recording software was a bit slow. I mean, I think it was also a bug in OBS, so... Nah. <laughs> in, anyway, let's, let's maybe just show the documentation. So, yeah. <laughs> It's generated all of the documentation here for the crate. Uh, you can see it all here, um, including all of the documentation for all of the uh, for all of the types. Um, so oh, yeah, that's 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 nice. It's all public now, and anyone can use it as and when they want to manipulate trites and and trits and so on. Uh, it's a fairly extensive crate. Um, I'm not aware of anything else like it in the Rust ecosystem that that allows a manipulation of of uh, of ternary data. Um, so yeah, cool. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, that was the first ever B crate. So the documentation is online, so you can have a look. There is also an RFC that has been published to justify the design of such a thing. Uh, so you can also have a look at that. Uh, and yeah, that's what we wanted to present today. Um, maybe we can wait two or three minutes, maybe take some questions since we are back online. Yes, sure. uh, Did the benches kill it? <laughs> um, I have no idea.
um, that they may have done, although I think I did manage to hit a bug in OBS for some reason. Um, I've not used OBS enough to to have experience with its various idi uh, with its variant with its various oddities. All uh, right. It seems like there are no questions. Um, so maybe we'll call it a day. We'll be back next week. I'll be presenting something. Uh, so in the meantime, please feel free to contact us on the different uh, big channel on Discord if you have any questions regarding what we just presented or maybe some feedbacks or suggestions for the next one. Um, no, there is a question. Oh, yeah. So uh, it's regarding no STD. Um, I don't think it's a priority for the prototype, is it? Um, we, no. uh, we're making use of uh, async STD at the moment, which requires STD. Um, yeah. I presume yeah. we're going to be swapping out components at a later date as and when. Yeah, so I wouldn't say it's a priority for the prototype. If I'm not mistaken, there was in the last version, uh, in the very last version of Rust, there was something to stabilize no STD in uh, asynchronous context, right? Yeah. I think I saw that. So that's very, very recent. We are talking a, a, a month. So it wasn't even possible previously. Uh, it's one month old, uh, one release of Rust old. So now we are going to be able to uh, think about it, but it wasn't really previously uh, doable for all our crates since we are doing heavy use of asynchronous stuff. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, nope. Right. Okay. I think that for today, uh, and we'll see you again next week for the second episode of these uh, live coding sessions. So thank you very much for watching, and thanks for your feedbacks and suggestions. Okay. Thanks all. Bye. Yeah.